Hello everyone and welcome back to Disco Elysium. This is episode 15. Last time, I think we wrapped up as much cryptozoology stuff as we could do for now. Uh, we had that uh, sort of coming to terms with, uh, you know, the doubts of Lena and Morel and uh, is there actually anything here and calls into question the origin of their relationship. Um, and it was very sad. And uh, Lena has left now, and we are here at 11 a.m. on day four. And we're going to continue on. Uh, we're going to continue on with our day now, where we've got many things to do. Um, many, many things to do. Um, it being a new day is very exciting uh, because it means that we've got some some decent stuff to do. Um, Funnily enough, we actually have uh, this task is finding out where the rest of the armor is and it asks us to ask Kuno what he knows. So I actually might chat to Kuno about this just to see if I can get this task out of the journal uh, because we've obviously done, you know, we found one piece of the armor um, elsewhere. We found it on... Um, Gary, uh, the crypto fascist, and then I would assume that there would also be gauntlets, you know, arm pieces involved as well. Maybe someone else has those. Uh, so we'll check in with Kuno about that. We can run the number on the victim's armor, but now that um, Kim's Kanima is back, um, asking about the tattoos, we may decide to check in with the scab leader about that. We'll see. Uh, I've got to go back over the waterlock to sync the signs with with Nord, uh, Nord, Nord, uh, with Noid, uh, and then that is sort of ties into the whole church thing, which I can explore with Kim, etc., uh, etc. Et you know, etc., etc. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna leave. First things first. I have a lot of tear in my tear bag. A lot of tear in my tear bag. So I'm going to cash that in, and uh, it'll be a good opportunity for us to also speak to um, all of the workers here. There. Do you smell that? Because this may be, I think rhetoric might be chiming in with the bringing everyone to action with communism thought that we had uh, in the morning, which is go to the workers and recruit them to the cause. Smell what? Can you not detect that inimitable whiff of dissatisfaction and restlessness, that sense that the world is in need of dramatic, even violent, reordering? Yes. Okay. So it is the it is the communist uh, thought pattern. Close your eyes and take a deep breath. Can you smell it now? You inhale. The cilia along your olfactory epiphilium tingle with excitement as they sift through the swirling morass of industrial odors. First come the smells of the agitated strike breakers, layers of body oil and sweat, over buttered meals pulled from bake-like lunch pails, the biting stench of lye soap. And then there's the slowly oxidizing metal gates, the scent of stale grease emanating from every crack. Everything in order, detective? The lieutenant gives you a quizzical look. Just taking in the morning air like a normal detective. A personal errand, smelling for communist Kim, working on developing my political consciousness. I'm smelling for communists, Kim. You're smelling for... You know what? I'll just leave you to it. Carry on, detective. It is a mark of the lieutenant's respect for you that he does not press you on this decidedly extracurricular errand. Mm. The lieutenant lacks your highly developed political olfactory cortex. The reek of communism is undeniable, and it's coming from that railing right there. You mean from Manana? Yes, now's your chance to establish contact. Mm. But be easy about it. Communists have been known to charge when startled. Interesting. Okay. 
Let me cash in this money first. And then not steal a raincoat, even though it's a white check. You see several packaged raincoats fill a low shelf beneath a display of croissants and juice bottles. The raincoats are transparent, except for the big Fritta slogan on the back. 58%. The tear machine stands in the corner. A sign says, one bottle equals 10 cents. Here we go, baby. We picked up so much in the fisherman shacks area. Your bottles clunk into the machine and the money appears with a satisfying jingle. You're a richer man now. Nice. The tear machine stands in the corner. That was a decent amount, and yet... $7.80. Um, is this about the questions again? Okay. Here we go. Cleaning those streets. Now let's speak to Manana. Hold on, Wandering Man. How can I help you? Okay. Attempt to establish contact. Listen, brother. There's something important I need to talk to you about. What's that, boy? Yeah. He tilts his head slightly. Now's your chance. Remember, communists are notoriously skittish, so it's best to insinuate your way in. Insinuate your way in. I'm looking for people who really know how to grind a sausage, if you know what I mean. It involves our mutual fen uh, friend, Cross. Put your hand next to your head and curl your fingers like deer antlers. I'm investigating a peculiar smell, one with revolutionary implications. Secret cabal of mole people. Uh, let's go for the first one. Do you know how to grind a sausage? Hmm. Have you tried a butcher shop? He looks at you with perfect equanimity. <laughs> I'm investigating a, a peculiar smell, one with revolutionary implications. Could be coming from one of the jam lorries. Cargo's been sitting out for a while. Okay, maybe it's time to abandon the subtle approach. It involves our mutual fr friend, Kras. Don't think I've ever met a Kras personally. Then again, I've never been to Kras. He narrows one eye at you. Okay, maybe it's time to abandon the subtle approach. Okay. What I'm trying to say is I'm looking for communists. Do you know any? Communistas, huh? Can't say that's where I thought you were heading with this. Not that I'm criticizing. It's good for a man to take his time and think about the whole socio-political world picture. It's certainly been an interesting development to witness first time. <laughs> so you've given up copying and now you're hunting communistas. Care to say why? I'm on a sort of quest to develop my political potential and I need their help. A fellow plains roamer in search of greater understanding. A classic story. I wish I could help. Unfortunately, I don't know many communistas. I thought you union guys were all communists. Some are, some aren't. It's a big institution, room for all kinds. Communistas, seminist supremacists, even an anti-institutional boyadero. There is warmth in his voice when he talks about the Union. Whatever his personal politics, this is his home. All right, so if he isn't personally a communist, he's definitely hanging out with them. Ah, but you know, I did meet a genuine ideologo a few months ago. Perhaps he's your guy. What's an ideologo? You know, a guy with a theory. Someone who likes to pit his theory against other theories in deadly theory combat. Not deadly theory combat? How did you meet him? It was late one night as I was leaving the harbor. He was waiting on the corner in a bright white jacket. Classic Saramaritian style. Saramaritian? He asked me for a light. We shared cigarettes. Then he asked me if I ever thought about getting into some of the extra physical branches of communism. <laughs> An extremely cool way to establish contact. Wish I'd thought of that. Um, what does that mean, the extra physical branches of communism? No idea. I took it to mean he was asking me to join some sort of underground cell. A very old school organizing technique. The sort of thing communistas used to do before the revolution. 
What did you tell him? The same thing I always tell people who try to press some claim on me. I said, every boyadero rides alone. I want to ask the third question again. This one. An extremely cool way to establish contact. Wish I'd thought of that. It was all right. A little like something out of a Vespertine spy novel. But I must respect the effort. Okay. How do I find this guy? I couldn't tell you. Once I declined his offer, we finished our cigarettes and he disappeared back into the night. Just before he melted into the shadows, he turned to me and said, Remember Dobrava and Abadanais. Dobrava and Abadanais. And then he was gone. Who are Dobreva and Abadanais? I don't know. Guess not everyone remembers. Okay. What do you think it means? Been wondering about that myself. Some communista inside talk could be. Not meant for the wider problem. They love that kind of thing. You'd have to ask someone who knows this ideologo personally. I have to say, though, it sounds like you found yourselves a proper hunt. The man whispers a jaunty tune. A coastal breeze ruffles his hair. Right. I'm going to go through these new these uh, new options here. So, that weasel I visited, turns out he has one hell of a colonial mug collection. Yeah, the janitor who gave me the key to his apartment said the guy's a bit of an asshole. Yeah, his mug collection certainly represented uh, antiquated social values. Like I said before, I don't know much about this weasel, but the bossman said he's a real piece of work. Thanks for helping out, friend. Why are you striking? We're negotiating our share. Your share? Aye. Wait, so not wages or pensions or... This stuff. They already covered. At least you got the benefits, that's something. It's not enough. Not enough to get ahead. More about keeping us in our place. Yeah. How large a share would you like? All of it. However, right now we want all the harbor workers to be on the company's board, so they could take part in the decision-making process. This seditious talk sounds like communism. <laughs> Just so we're on the same page. Communism is basically wanting to kill the rich people. Or deporting them to a labor camp in Southeast Grad. But don't say that out loud if you're a communist. And then we come back to communism again where it's like, are you a communist? No. I don't think I'm a communist. Seeing something of value and saying I want it all to myself is a much older and simpler notion. No science to it at all. Even a weak child can think it. The only things holding someone back are I can't and I shouldn't. It's actually a very interesting uh, response. Because, yeah, even children just like, that. Like, mine! This thing is mine and mine alone. But the stuff you do aligns admirably well with the World Republic. Why not call yourself a communist? I have nothing against communists. They are honorable boyaderos. And they have good analysis. But my own code serves me well. If my code starts failing, a code can fail a man as well as a man can fail a code, then I will have to submit to a new one, which may well be communism. He knows who he is. Firmly grounded. Has no need to reinforce or elaborate his political identity to himself or others. Okay. I guess I understand. See, I am primarily a lazy person. <laughs> He looks very amused as if thinking about some private joke or mystery. The boss man, Everard, what can you tell me about him? I think it's best you make up your own mind now that you've met him. In my eyes, he is a capable organizer and a decent businessman. What does bossing the union entail anyway? I guess you kind of get to be the village chief. He oversees the harbor, makes deals with the owners or other relevant parties, watches out for his own. Okay. By that, you mean corruption? By heavens, why would he not be corrupt? We live in a harsh and disordered world, see? And in this world, the old man is corrupt for our benefit, and we know it. Appreciate it, even. He is, personally, not too lavish. He's, this man has a very, like, uh, interesting perspective on things, and it's it's not a not a bad one at all. He You can tell that he, he doesn't... Uh, he's not, like, carefree on this stuff. Like, he's, he's thought about it, and he's like, well, I mean... 
he, he has he has good answers. He has good responses. But that desk did seem quite lavish. He is reasonably lavish, sure. That's his prerogative. It's not like you want a saintly demeanor on a corrupt motherfucker. <laughs> that would be a manipulative illusion. Yeah, yeah ex exactly. Besides, there are no non-corrupt systems in the world anyway. And moralism is the most corrupt of them all. This man has political theory, yeah. and it has not failed him today. He's he's got he's got good takes. You seem to have spent a lot of time thinking about the political situation. Sure, I've had the necessary free time. Fortunately, there's always time. Spreads his arms wide. The look in his brown eyes conjures up an understanding. For him, having command of his time is the most important thing. It all comes together now. The way he speaks about scabs, his general attitude. He's a follower of a 500-year-old Franco-Nigerian Boyadero code, itself an appropriation of Vespertine cool. That of a noble peasant or a traveling herdsman. True to yourself, independent in your actions, loyal to your friends. Obsolete, passe, it's not disco. Maybe I am a Boyadero. No. I could. No. The man sits on the railing, his hands reaching far and wide. Yet it feels as if he could effortlessly go even wider, if need be. An endless torrent of time. An inspiration. Good talking to you. Gotta run. I love that encyclopedia is just like, no. No. Alright, um... I'm gonna do a I'm gonna do a save. Dare I ask this gentleman about the tattoos? Right to work! Right to work! Shame on you! Now when we last spoke, it's been a while since we have last spoken to Joyce. Uh believe that it was said that it's not a very not probably not the best idea to go poking this photo around asking for information on tattoos, but I don't think we've come across anyone else where we've asked them to decipher some tattoos, so let's take out the picture and see how this goes. Don't think so. He grunts, barely glancing it. Suddenly, this feels like a really, really bad idea. Wow, okay, so you can go straight to the point of it was on your kernel and be like just really kind of lay it lay it on him they're on the body of the man who was hanged behind the cafeteria here we're investigating a murder these tattoos are on the victim's body inland empire being like mm, bad idea i'm gonna go with number three silence he takes the photo. Grey eyes dart back and forth on the glossy surface. His face is unmoving. Hard as a stone, but beneath it. You see dead flesh in colorful rivers of polychrome. Melting skin and hair. Fucking loincloths. Really did him in. Uh, loincloths? Yeah. Can you tell me what the tattoo means? What it means? He points to one tiny star in a web of lines, away from the man's heart, almost on his stomach. I can tell you what this one means. Only one. You want to hear what happened here? Yes. Our colonel is deep in the bush here. Deep in the fucking bush. In Benital. 41. Monsoon season. He's on a reconnaissance mission. So he's just a, he's he's come out with it as well and said our colonel. So without us addressing it to him as like an antagonistic way, he's come out with it. Bonito is one of the inhabited islands of the Seminese archipelago near the Pale. Covered in jungle, it was anchor point for the Seminese nationalists in the proxy war held on the islanders' territory. He spent a month behind enemy lines, scouting kipped villages, 
nothing but fucking bugs and snakes for fun. Men are getting restless. There's talk of switching employers. With some strange emotion, this is about to get really graphic. Last moment to back off. Don't interrupt him. Our boy. He's only a captain then, but he knows how these men think. If they don't see action soon... His voice gets strangely quiet a long, long way from right to work. His gaze pierces the paper. At dawn, he comes upon two kids, breeding in the bushes by the river. Or maybe they weren't breeding. Maybe. They were just making eyes at each other. I like to think they were breeding. We shot the boy. He was useless, but the girl, she was nice. A little fat, you know, but not too old. She was quite the entertainment for the week she lasted, expired in the hands of Sarge Mason. The kind of guy who'd make Chief there shit his pants and cry like a bitch. God. <laughs> Mason couldn't let go. Cut the tits off her cold body and fucking ate them. <laughs> Said primitive spirits were watching over him now. Drowned in a creek a week later. Spirits, my ass. Something stirs in your stomach. There's a word on the tip of your tongue. Colorless. Odorless. It's... Evil. You bet it was. What is evil? It's just... Nature. This guy. You say evil is when nature and spirit meet in the wrong place. You were there? No. I was in the domain. In Jamrock. Being a bouncer. You're not really a scab leader, are you? Fucking mask is getting sweaty. I want to take my mask off. But... Can I have it back? Go ahead. All right now. Free commerce! Keep the goods flowing! On the photo in your hands, the dead man's skin is studded with stars. Tens, hundreds of them, littering his dead skin. So the, the stars seem to represent maybe missions or places that he's been, like doing this kind of stuff. Um, which also, you know, comes around and ties into the, the fact that Kim and I need to, uh, interview the sexual assault victim upstairs. So there you go. That's, uh, that's what happens when you do that. Uh, and you bring the tattoo to his attention. It gives you a very confronting story. Um... I'm going to follow up with Alice about the armor. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone. This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Did, did you find out more about the owner of the, the armored boots? I need something to distract my brain from that story that we just witnessed. <laughs> Sorry, sir. I still haven't heard back from the database people. Try calling again later. Is there anything else I can do for you? Damn, it's even been over a day because we missed our opportunity to call yesterday. Okay. 57th, over and out. In the cabin, you see. Interesting. Okay. I guess we'll call back later. I was expecting an update by now. That's okay. Alright. We're gonna we're gonna get this interview sorted. Um nice and early in, in the day. Now that I've got Kim with me, and then I'm going to um, chat with Kuno. Now, we're about to have an encounter, so I will... Let's have a look. 
The fingerless gloves have returned to my inventory. I don't know where they went, but there they are. <laughs> so strange. Um, I'm going to need... What are we? Visual calculus, volition, empathy. Empathy's good. We want good empathy. And that's already at plus two. I'm a fan of that. Um, yeah, I'll keep the ledger on because it gives us some empathy. I actually think we might be okay with what we have on. Ooh, maybe I'll put my maybe I'll put my logical beanie on as well. Let's put my logical beanie on. Dressed for the occasion. All right, Kim, you ready? The door is closed. Who is it? Tired. Controlled. This is the police. Can we come in? Come on up. The door is open. I'm drying my hair. Sounds like it's coming from upstairs somewhere. You could snoop around before going up. Okay. I'm gonna take this... I'm gonna take this tear bag off. <laughs> We we'll appear professional without our tear bag. Hotel bill calculations. Looks like she's had an extended stay. Piles of dirty clothes. A woman's. Yeah. She's made around four months of payments for this room. This room has sad all over it. Reminds you of your own. Um. Hmm. Should I look around first or not? Yeah, it's just the bathroom. You see the yard below, the corpse is no longer there. This medicine cabinet is full of wares. Sheets of pills haphazardly stacked one on top of the other. There's also a toothbrush somewhere in there. Look at the toothbrush. It's been used quite a lot. Look at the medications. Pharmaceuticals line the shelves, sheet upon sheet of pill bottle next to pill bottle. Acetylic acid, APAP, eye drops, blood thinners. That's quite the collection in here. Anything of not? He asks in a lowered voice, search the bottles. Pill bottles rattle like bones as you search the cabinet. Paracetamol, histoperidol, something in a foreign language you can't read. Behind them. An unusually shaped nasal spray. Its label reads, Necra. Necra. This is used to treat opioid overdoses. Always handy to have around. Necra. Opioid antagonist. Interesting. That's used for diamorphine overdoses. Okay. Search the pill sheets. Among some foreign, probably Mycenaean or Godvaldian, marked red blister packs you find. What? Do you find this is going to take a little know-how? That's cool because we didn't even. Uh, I specifically didn't equip some stuff to up the electrochemistry. I just kept what we had, but luckily this is seventy-two percent. A bright orange bottle with preptide stamped on it, in sunny, happy letters. Jackpot, baby! That's the stuff you're looking for. Your palms begin to sweat just holding that little plastic container. <laughs> Sweaty hands, need for speed. So this is the, this is our speed that we've been searching for without getting it from Kuno or Kuno's dad or something else. I feel like that there's other ways for us to get. It seems that we can either get speed from the drunks, from Kuno, or from this. What's so exciting about this orange bottle? It's speed, man. Just what you were looking for. They call it dextroamphetamine. And talk about psychological disorders. But what we're seeing here is some scientifically advanced trucker speed. Lieutenant, I also see a brand called uh, Preptide. Preptide. A euphemism for pharmaceutical amphetamine. Prescription speed. The fuck are you waiting for? Let's get super fucking preppy. Told Kim about it went even lower. I wasn't going to take it uh, anyway. Apparently we can just take it in plain sight, though, instead of 
trying to take it in secret. So I think just taking it in plain sight, obviously, is making Kim aware of it. Um, I feel like we'll be able to get some speed a different way anyway. I'm not here to loot bathroom cabinets right now. Just taking a look around. You feel someone watching you behind the glass door. A woman. And now we're at this balcony, so there you go. The bed has been hastily made. This window is pristine on the inside, unlike the one next to it. Light from the desk lamp reflects off the glass in an untarnished golden halo. Run your finger across the surface of the glass. Smooth as ice. There are spots of mud and rain on the outside, even smudges. But the surface of the window is clear from the inside. No chips, no hairline fractures. Following your lead, the lieutenant leans in closer to inspect the surface. This window was recently replaced. Looks like it, yes. You know which window has not been recently replaced? The one I smashed in my room? Yes, that one. Cold wind is seeping in right now. Just one floor below you. Messing up your concentration here. Outside we go. Nice. The smell of cigarette smoke in the air. Astra, menthol. There's another door here. Cold coffee in an ashtray that looks like a hedgehog. Look! A handful of dried white wildflowers. Just as you look at the flowers, a gust of wind raises them from the roof, picking them up in the air. Oh, discard chance, hand-eye coordination, move your hand, fast, red check. The wind brushes them off the roof. They're gone. No! 72% failure. We've been getting some really good rolls that have been in that area, so it was bound to have it happen sometime. That's such a shame. Obviously, we were discarding our chance, so it's not like we could have just cancelled it and then leveled up hand-eye coordination. Damn. Welcome to the roof. Class chair, Miss Orange, disco dancer. The young woman has a cigarette in one hand and a cup of coffee in the other. Her hair is still slick from the shower. Below her silvery jumpsuit, an athletic young body, built long and lean. I'm sorry for the mess down there. The cleaning lady hasn't come by in days. I'm beginning to wonder if she ever will. Nice view you've got here. It's much nicer now. Her eyes wander north toward the yard. Where the dead body used to hang. Clearly visible from the roof. But no longer. Thank you for that, officers. Truly. There is something in her light brown eyes. A sadness. When she thinks about the death of that man. You mentioned a cleaning lady. I think I need one. Oh, yes. Legends of room number one have made their way around the building. They say a portal to hell has opened in there. <laughs> Disco Infernum. There are vortices of dark energy present, but not to hell. To another place. A third place. Much different from our world. A third place? Interesting. That's probably why the cleaning lady quit. I am Kim Kisoragi. I am a detective from Precinct 57. I see you've already met my colleague. Have I ever? This is the one and only superstar cop. He's kind of a big deal around here. <laughs> I'm sad to say I've shifted copo type since we last saw each other. I'm a different cop now. Wow. Yes, wow. I'm now a herald of the planetary slaughterhouse, the abattoir to come. Things are very far from wow, little miss. I'm a changed man, a cop reborn to repent my shortcomings. I am the sorry cop. I thought I was going to be able to say I'm an art cop here. Well, I'm going to go with this one instead of the sorry cop. Wow, indeed. And what brings this herald back to me? 
Miss, we are investigating the murder of the man down there. The people who put him there have asked us to talk to you. Ah, oh, I see. She takes a pensive drag of her menthol cigarette. Be careful. Ask something else first. When you go there, use words like, I hear you have been through something difficult. What is your name, miss, for the for the record? Clausier Amondu. Amondu. And where are you from? Vredefort, Republic of Aranje. What is Aranje? A bad memory, officer. A bad memory of what? Of lilacs and lightning. Parks, glass. Duraluminium. Vredefort is a conference city. It's always autumn there. And night? At least it was for me. What's so bad about that? Nothing. If you're no longer there. And how old are you? I'm 28. What do you do, miss? What is your specialization? Something stupid. <laughs> What's that? Oranis lit. Oranis lit? Oranis literature. Uh. It's what I studied at the university. What is Arnie's uh, literature about? Fear of failure, fear of death, how it sucks to be Arnie's. All national literatures are... Only the name of the nation changes. If that's true, then River Sholian Lit would fit you like a glove. Arnie's Lit, what do you do with it? Nothing. I do nothing with it. <laughs> this is so dumb. <laughs> Show her some money. I'm just going to say cool. It's not very cool, but what can you do? Can we take a look at your passport, please? I'm afraid you can't, officer. Why is that? Because it's buried in a sealed plastic bag at an undisclosed location on the coast, along with cash and airline tickets. Thank you for your candor. Why? They say so in your tourist brochure. Keep travel documents away from your person when west of the river. Okay. How do I know you've told us your real name? If I were to lie to you, I would come up with a more mainstream name than Clausia Mondu. It's a weird name. She seems to be telling the truth, sire. Okay, then. Okie dokie. <laughs> if any of this made her nervous... It certainly doesn't show in her expression or her movements. Thank you. That's it for the record. The record. So official. Nice room you've got here. Yeah. It's pretty deluxe. No one likes to talk about their dirty laundry and their empty bottles. Maybe if you phrase it emotionally. What are you doing here in the... In the whirling in rags. I'm wintering. How long have you been staying here? About four months. I came in November. The bills downstairs concur. Why here? Here in the whirling, here in Martinez, or here in Ravishol? Let's go big. Not that big, but this big. Here in Ravishol. I always wanted to see the only city in the world in the worst time of the year. It's a tourist thing. The only city in the world in the worst time of the year. This is by far not the only reason she's here. And she isn't really hiding it either. Now it said, doesn't want to talk about the dirty laundry and empty bottles, but if we phrase it emotionally, <laughs> like saying it's sad, it looks, looks like you've got sad all over the place. Yeah, I've contaminated it pretty bad. Is that why you're out here? The contamination spreads from room to room. First, I escaped upstairs. The sad got that too. Then I found the handle for the summer door. What exactly is the nature of this contamination? For me, it's a mix of me with a lack of cleaning services. How about you? Talk around the establishment is... You have an industrial sad spill in there. She taps the roof with her heel. Somewhere below, 
military-grade sad is dripping off the walls. You should say the first thing. It's honest. It will lead to introspection. Something is bad in my head in the past. That's where it always comes from, isn't it? From the head and from the past. Well, it's a feeling. White and filled with doom, gaseous, invisible, deadly. It's everywhere. Sounds like an advanced form of what I've got. With a bit of old love sprinkled on top. Doesn't feel like love at all. Are you sure? Love is terror. <laughs> got me there. Sheer terror. Panic and screaming. That window's new. It is. She moves slightly to your left to check her reflection in it. The lieutenant makes a note in his notebook. He finds the answer unsatisfying. Mm. I'm not going to really mention that I've been poking around. I have other questions for you. Okay. Watching herself reflected in the bedroom window, tall and sparkling and draped in smoke. They tell us you've been through something difficult. Something difficult? I've been through at least half a dozen difficult things. Which one do you mean? Uh, were you sexually assaulted, miss? By sexually assaulted, you mean raped? Yes. It's a bit early in the morning for raped, isn't it? She sounds positively buoyant, vivacious, totally unbothered. I mean, actually, it's already already afternoon. And what does that mean? Were you... Yeah... I'm going to go with not raped. I can't say that stuff about him. Tell them it's not my style. They'll have to, you know, if they want to jazz up the charges, they'll have to get someone more, uh, rapeable. Boy, they. She means the hardy boys. Are you saying that you were asked to tell us you were assaulted? Not explicitly, but I understood what they meant. It wouldn't hurt to spice things up a bit. Some assault and battery. Sexual assault, maybe. It was clear the latter would be spicier. Interesting. So... There's been a situation where the body... <clears throat> the body has been shot. Then hung. Hardy boys admit to it. They also are trying to, in their honesty, trying to establish a motive for doing so or to paint this guy, the victim, in a negative light of he was doing this shit and then also assaulted the woman that was staying here. But she's being seemingly honest with us and being like, mm, look, not actually what happened. So they've uh, they've asked they asked her to spice it up. Titus asked you to spice things up for us. Pretty much. Warming them. Mm. She must be very cold and exhausted of this life. What did happen between you and the victim? We partied. What kind of partying? <laughs> Point to your bloated face, the kind I do? With all due respect, sir, I think we partied a little harder than that. No one parties harder than me. Please, you're alive in 50. I've known people who party so hard they're dead at 14. That is true. Got me there again. What did you do when you parted? We drank, sir. A lot. For weeks, basically. We had that effect on each other. We made each other drink harder. That's why I liked him. Okay, so there's an established sort of uh, relationship and connection here. Not, like, necessarily romantic. I'm not saying that right now. When I say relationship, I mean, you know, obviously a relationship between a human and a human at the moment. Um, so this isn't like this person was just around when the, the, the victim was being 
drunk and stupid, they have an established, uh, an established relationship. What else? Stimulants. Speed also has that effect, making you drink harder. And then drinking harder makes you do more speed. It's quite the combination. We also had sex. And there you go. And there is a bit more than that. Were feelings involved? A little. The drugs were good enough, and we did enough of them. How did you two meet? The lieutenant's voice is quiet, calm. Downstairs, at the bar. He was on some sort of assignment. Uh, a military man, as you probably know. Had a cool, scary scar. She appears aloof, but that scar part, the scary, is stressed and drawn out. What's that about? Apprehension? With longing, she misses him. When was this? A month ago? Something like that. Okay. It must have been hard for you, seeing him there. Oh, yes. I've had a great view. From the roof, out of the bathroom window, in my dreams. A bitter cringe. It hurts. You look to the lieutenant. He takes a small step closer. You called us, DRCN. Oh. Yes. We found our caller. Jackpot. The call reporting the hanging that was you. I made it. And I would appreciate it if you didn't tell everyone. In Martinez, they call it snitching. Reporting crimes is confidential in Ravachol, miss. Okay. The caller's voice was disguised. I didn't exactly disguise it. I just muffled the mic and nicked the landline a little. Nicked it? How? With nail clippers. And I diverted some radio fuzz into it. Into the cold wire. Clever. You were right to suspect there might be foul play involved with the broken phone line. And in the process, you broke the landline downstairs. Did I? Fuck. I didn't mean to. I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> Okay, maybe not so clever. Accidentally clever. Jigsaw falling into place. This is satisfying. Good catch. I appreciate the symmetry. Why go through all the trouble? I don't know, sir. It was stupid. I was drunk, too. I was probably afraid the union was listening in. Locals say they have ears in the wires. Thank you for making the call, miss. It was the right thing to do. I didn't want to, sir. But if I hadn't, he'd still be hanging there. What can you tell me about him? Name, eyes, age? I'm sorry, I can't do it. Not right now. Later, maybe. I keep seeing him. Like he is now. I can't talk about his... I don't know. Hair? Another puff, more nervous. I know it's difficult, miss. We can return to it later. She meant she sees him in her dreams. I don't know if also saying I've also seen him into a, in a dream would attempt to convey some sort of uh, bridge between her and I in a way that makes it feel her she might make it feel easier to communicate or talk to us with some you know relativity there. Or whether saying nothing is better. I think I'll go... I think I'll say it anyway. I've also seen him in a dream. You have? Not like I do, I imagine. How do you see him? You don't want to know. Hmm. I don't... Hmm. I don't know. Better conclude this part of our talk. Oh, yes. What did they hang him for, if not rape? He had something to do with the strike. One has been roiling since I got here. Rotten timing. But you probably know all about it. And his role in the strike was... what? I think he was in a security detail. He was ex-military. Worked for Wild Pines. And against the Union. We didn't discuss work much, if you know what I mean. But... I understood it was dangerous. And they lynched him for it? She nods. Why was there a bullet in his head? 
is a pretty tough question, but I feel like we gotta ask it. Bullet? They shot him too? I'm not picking up on any theater craft here, sir. The pause is sincere. They stripped his clothes and they shot him? You mean after they hanged him? I'm confused, sorry. So am I. Were you aware that he had also been shot, miss? Things are starting to go a little over my head here. I thought he was hanged. I was not present when they did it. I don't know what happened. I just know what they told me and Sylvie, the bartender. This is beginning to get confusing for you too. And we don't like that. Where was she last Sunday night? Where were you when this happened? Cowering. I was cowering downstairs with Sylvie. How do the Hardy Boys know you? They're frequent guests. Downstairs. They have a booth for union members. They're probably down there now. And how did you meet? Over drinks. It's been a long, boring winter. Did you party? A little, yeah. Like you partied with the deceased? No, not as hard. I'm sorry to have to ask this, but have you had a physical relationship with any of the Hardy Boys? I have. Uh, which one? Which ones, sir? I don't remember precisely. Titus, obviously. But as I said, it's been a long winter. Could that have been part of the reason they hanged him? I gotta try and establish a motive. Could that be why they lynched him? Jealousy? I hope not. Actually, I know that's not the reason. I'm careful about that kind of thing. Not crossing the wires, you know? But that's probably where they got the rape idea. What do you mean? Men like that? I don't know. It's the way their imaginations work. I suspect it's what they'd like to do to me. Thank you for telling us all of this, miss. She breathes a silvery sigh of relief and weariness. The air on the roof feels humid. Should we head by downstairs, officer? We may have things to discuss there. I had something else, before we go. A little thing. She nods. Silvery cigarette fumes disappear into her mouth. A volition check that we can retry. Okay. Look her in the eye. It is a white trick. So 42%, slight confusion about the bullet, and a standard anti-world die. Interesting that that's one of the things that gives us a plus. I'm going to try it, and then if it doesn't work, I'm going to level Volition and try again. Soft, light brown eyes look back at you, directly into the space behind your eye sockets. You see the smoke rise from between her painted red lips. She's beautiful. I have bad news for you. What? You know these guys? Who? Me? Yes, you. He's talking about you, you boring stiff. <laughs> I'm having on my brain. You too. <laughs> Me? What did I do? I'm merely a master thespian. Oh, this is good. This is like one of the, one of those moments where the different aspects of our brain are, are giving each other sass. This is this is incredible. These guys are compromised. She's got them singing along to her tune. The little bleeps and bloops you trust for info. You can't trust them anymore. I have to ditch my my intellect. No, we got to get rid of it. No more drama. No more logic. <laughs> it's all about volition now. Oh my god. Believe it. What is happening? <laughs> Which ones exactly are affected? There's no way of knowing. At the moment, I'm afraid it's best to assume all of them. Even you, Volition? Bullshit, man. <laughs> I ain't compromised. Especially that guy. <laughs> that guy's the most compromised one in here. Fuck's sake. No fucking way, man. 
I just want a drag of that sweet menthol Ziggy. I only think, I, th- I genuinely think that the only thing that could improve all of this is, uh, I don't have a problem with how it is now. I think it's, it's perfectly fine, but I think it would just be wonderful. It would be a lot of work, but wonderful if every single different aspect of your brain, like volition, electrochemistry, half-life and stuff, um, or maybe not that extreme, maybe each different section, like intellect, physique, uh, motorics and such, uh, if each of those different sections of your brain had a voice to represent that part instead of it being the same voice, it would probably be too much to have it for each separate thought, but maybe just having four different voices um, would be pretty cool. Because we've got the ancient reptilian brain and the limbic system and also the horrific necktie. Um, having a couple extra voices in there to give some variety to the different parts of us. Like if we had an intellect, a psyche, a physique, and a motor X voice, that would be pretty sweet. Um, it would probably be a lot more work to have one for each. But it would still be cool. Really? Quick. Tell me what's under her jumpsuit. Glory. Truth. Softness. Protect her. She wants you. Your compromised electrochemistry. I take it back. He's got it pretty bad. But this next guy is on another level entirely. She likes you. The crown head is a boring condom. He's jealous. This is human nature. How did this happen? How it always does. Through subtlety. What can I do? There's nothing you can do about it. You are how you are, and she is how she is. Things will go as they do. Can't you turn them normal again? No. What use is this, then? It's better to know you're being played than to be played without knowing it, is it not? Mm. Does this mean she's been lying to me? Yes. Mr. Thespian here has been singing pians to how truthful she is. She is a lady most fair and just. <laughs> In his defense, to reduce him to such inadequacy, she probably had to employ half-truths more often than outright lies. That is correct. And omissions, too. Yeah. That seems believable. Or are we lying to ourselves? Who, who's, who's telling the truth? Can I trust that guy? A little. They're all still of limited use, interpreting things to the best of their ability. Maybe they add flair or something. I wouldn't know. I don't add flair. <laughs> but when it comes to assessments of character and factual accuracy, they are not to be trusted. Not with her. Can I trust any of them ever again? Don't be melodramatic. You can trust them. Just not with her. What is her plan? You can't draw a sound conclusion. The one he usually does says, she may want to control the information rollout, not to become a suspect. She may have a past she's escaping, unrelated to this case. You doubt it's something truly insidious. See? It's oddly moderate. Probably compromised. God. I've been talking to myself long enough. Let's get back to it. Don't worry. It's only been four or five seconds. You've got this. I love that. Miss, are you manipulating me? The silence broken. She exhales a little cloud of smoke and says, God, no. Okay. Volition, I can't trust you. <laughs> that was an interesting check. We can come back and talk to her later, so we'll return to this later. Why not? I'll be here until 11 p.m. drinking coffee, most likely. Okay, we'll come back to this later. Kim! Looks like we have more to discuss with those so-called hardy boys. Half their reasoning just went out the window. Mm. You think this will make them cooperate? Nothing will make them respect the RCM, but it will disrupt the game they prepared for us. We just tripped off one layer of whatever it is. Her decision to not corroborate their story was definitely not part of the plan. Why did she tell us all of that? What else could she have done? Lie? She saw there was no way to lie and get away with it. 
I have reason to doubt my ability to see through her lies. If not you, then me. It was a smart move from her. Something is off here. You think so? She seems forthcoming. Unusually so. Being forthcoming about some things is a good way to obscure other things. Mm. The best liars are always forthcoming. Anyway, we should move. I suspect our investigation will bring us back here soon enough. Okay. The same small, heavy door. No lock in sight. <laughs> Just straight up kick the door in 3%. Uh, where does this lead to? I don't know, Lieutenant Yefreta. Lieutenant Yefreta. It is not the first closed door we found in this building. There is also your mysterious blue kitchen door. That is correct. Do you think it's important? I don't know. The further we get, the more this building seems to be tied to the case. The vigilantes, the cadaver, and a number of people connected to the case are in or around this building. This door is part of it. It's not unimportant. So maybe the door below is a mega investigation. No, still a mini investigation. Push. It's barred from the inside. You hear the bar rattle in the brackets. Okay. Sounds like it's heavy too. Very sturdy. Must be something valuable inside to go through the trouble of protecting it. The door is very sturdy indeed. It's barred from the inside. Is there another way to get in or is this the only way? We can retry this very low 3% check. We'll come back to that too. Okay. Let's check our journal. So, confront the Hardy Boys with what Class J told us. Um, and then... We'll come back later to question her again. Um, okay. And then obviously we've removed our opportunity to get speed at like a good percentage anyway. Unless we, we could come back, you know, if, when Kim's not there later on. <laughs> Nothing on the front page rings a bell. Strange. Oh, of the newspaper. Okay. I'm not going to confront the Hardy Boys just yet either. I'll do that on my way here. Uh, on my way back. I think what we may want to do instead is um, drink some alcohol, equip some physically related um, items that improve our situation. And then, go and confront Kuno's dad. Um, I'm going to up some... We've got... Uh, I'm sitting on a few, quite a few skill points right now. So, I'm going to take the opportunity to actually um, up some of my lower... Um, some of my lower skills up to a four. And maybe even get some other ones a little bit more higher up than that. We're very, we're very logical. I'm going to do that and I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep two skill points left over at the moment. And we're not currently leveling a new we're not currently le having a new thought right now, either. Our pain threshold is increased by one. Hand-eye is minus. Authority is minus. Visual calculus is minus. I just realized we haven't read the description for Wompty Dumpty Dom Center. Minus one suggestion for 42 minutes. It's Wednesday evening, and something heinously exciting is underway. Um, people have gathered beneath the billowing roof of an oddly shaped trophy building, sipping wine and exchanging opinions. 29-year-old Wonder Twins Guy and Keith Joost are the stars of the show with their bomber jackets and white sneakers, head curators of this art exhibition. It's the Wompty Dom De Domniest event of the year, and all the cool kids have RSVP'd. Where are you, if you are not there? Interesting. Now, um, we've been to...
Ooh, some, I think I have something in my room as well. Uh, that's an interfacing check with the mirror. Um, so I think we need to go into the uh, into the apartments because Kuno said we've already been in there before. So we're gonna go into the apartments, and then when we go back to Kuno, we'll ask him uh, uh, see if we can get his information on the rest of the on the armor. There it is again. There's a spectral scent haunting this pair, no doubt. And it smells like... Communism. Sea brine, mostly. Oh. Because it's a pair. Thank you, Perception. Years of turmoil, of hopes and dreams, ground beneath the inexorable tides of capital. Another deep breath. What do you smell? The first thing that strikes you is the overwhelming brine. You imagine yourself underwater. A hundred-legged arthropod scuttling along the murky silt at the bottom of the sea. But then the unmistakable reek of seagull shit hits you, buoyed along on the air currents, an acrid melody atop mouldering cords of wood rot and heavy fuel oil. Still smelling for communist, detective? Yes. Well, I'll be over here when you're finished. The lieutenant nudges a piece of trash with his foot. His impatience is feigned. He's actually curious to see how this personal errand shakes out. What the lieutenant thinks is irrelevant. Your politico olfactory cortex is lighting up like a holiday display. The scent of communism is overwhelming, and it's coming right from that balcony over there. You mean from Cindy? Certainement. A precocious communist youth. A symbol of a kinder, more hopeful future. Now's your chance to establish contact with your revolutionary brothers and sisters. A chance to establish contact with the future. What a beautiful, terrible thought. Okay. Another one for the cause? Question mark. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, yeah. Um, flat number 12. Give me a moment. I'm looking for the parents of a kid named Kuno. The waiters are at the end of this hallway, right next to the communal bathroom. De Vrutus. Thank you. So this one here makes sense. We have not been here before. A shabby door hangs oddly on its hinges, secured to the door frame with a safety chain. An unpaid energy bill is attached, threatening to cut off the electricity. It's addressed to Mr. Uno de Reuter. Uno de Reuter. Looks like we've found where Kuno's dad lives. And the place comes with three months worth of utility bills. We can knock, or we can use the cutters on the chain. We don't have a warrant to really force ourselves in here, however, we do have reason to believe there's speed in this establishment. No response. The apartment numbers have fallen off the door, leaving the panel with a sticky one shaped shadow and a marker drawn. Two, you'll need to equip the chain cutters to enter. Snip right through the metal. Okay. A shabby door hangs oddly on its hinges. Secured to the door, snip. The cutter goes through them like dead leaves. The links fall to the ground on the other side of the door. Don't let the quiet fool you. The beast is in there somewhere. Ready to rip you to shreds with a broken bottle. I know there's no stopping you, but let's at least make this quick. Okay. If there is someone in there, I want to make sure that I'm prepared. Uh, can I, is there a, any potential way that I can use a pry bar as a, as a weapon if I have it in my hands? Um, okay. 
I should potentially, I'm thinking I could just go in here charged up with alcohol to increase my physique. Just have a bit of a, have a bit of a drink. I haven't had beer before. Let's have a beer instead. And then... We get more pain threshold if I equip some armor and some volition. Not very empathetic right now. Composure, electrochemistry, shivers, minus physical instruments, I know. Some more half light. Oh yeah. <laughs> We're going in there with the fuck the world jacket. And the armor. Ah, oh, you know what? I need to I need to get Kim to wear his jacket somehow. Physical instrument on the white tank top instead. And the bow tie for dramatic effect. Uh, we've got the half light gloves already. Okay. This might be as good as we uh, as good as we're gonna get. You finally made it, haven't you? People point fingers at you and whisper to each other when you pass by, wondering to themselves. Where did that man get such a cool jacket? <laughs> did he receive it upon graduating the École Normale Supérieure de Badasserie? Is he dangerous? Damn right I'm dangerous. You are very dangerous, my friend. Dangerous and cool. In fact, no one dares to say a single thing about the jacket. But believe me, they are all very impressed. Kim, can you wear your jacket? Yes. Hmm. Still haven't been able to... I haven't checked what the percentage for this will actually be within Lind Empire. What about me? I want to get you to... I want to get you to wear the jacket, but I don't, I don't know if I can. No. Huh? Your brain sends the signal to your lips, but they refuse the order. The eyebrow, is, it's like you're locked down. Something the matter? This guy has got authority off the charts. With just the flick of his eyebrow, he's able to make you his thrall. What can I do about it? Nothing. You better hope he doesn't abuse his authority. There's a lot of it. Silently scream. If the lieutenant were an evil man, who knows what sort of havoc he could wreak? The lieutenant relaxes his eyebrow, and you seem to regain control of yourself. Good. Let's change the subject. I was really hoping that this jacket... What if I put on his jacket for a sec? No. I was really hoping that, like, if I wear the jacket, we could, like, be like, Kim, time to wear your jacket. Okay. I'm going to drink to raise my physique. Yes, okay. Physique raised, damaged morale. Um, all right, let's equip the flashlight. Then I can use it to blind him. <laughs> um, all right. I look very intimidating now. We've got my, my fuck the world... I got my fuck the world jacket on. <laughs> Trying to get it to face the camera. Hang on. And Kim is unfortunately not dressed for the uh Kim is unfortunately not dressed for the occasion with me. Which is a shame. Damn it, it's empty. <laughs> Alright, well I was I was preparing, just in case. Just in case I had to get into a fight. Because I haven't had to get into a fight yet. We decided not to, you know, engage Measure Head and Fisticuffs, you know. Glossy erotica covers the wall, wrinkled from moisture. Oh no, someone is in here and they're sleeping. Okay. We might have to deal with a, with a sleeping, rageful drug addict. Let's see. A phone book lies open on the table, covering a stack of utility bills. Right next to it, in plain sight, 
sits a small bottle of amphetamine, conveniently equipped with a straw. Score, it's right there, baby. Today's your lucky day. Lieutenant, I've located psychoactive substances on this table. Good. Confiscate it. And there we go. There's the speed that we needed without having to steal it from uh, Class J. The minuscule amount of amphetamine doesn't interest the lieutenant in the slightest. He listens instead to something in the other room. Take the speed. You pocket the bottle as if it were the most natural thing in the world. Nice. Don't wait. Celebrate. Blast that shit right here. Take inventory of it once this boring table shit is done. Blast it before you face the beast, De Ruita. You're going to need the encouragement. Okay. <sighs> we do have the objective to sniff it. Take down Kuno's dad is actually optional. Hey Kim, would you be upset with me if I... <laughs> Minus one morale, plus one motorix, plus one psyche. So my morale would take another hit because I've also had alcohol. How convenient. Someone has equipped this tiny bottle of amphetamines with a straw. It's the lorry man's speed on the go. <laughs> Has four uses. All right, Kim. I'm, I'm, I'm throwing my morale out the window for this encounter with alcohol and speed. Don't look at me, Kim. Now that you've acquired some stimulants, it's time for a little pick-me-up. Time to detect. Wait, but Kim is here. He'll be disappointed. See? That's your problem. A lack of confidence. Speed can help you with that. And, Kim, it can help you with everything. Will it make me into a super cop? It will make you into more than that. A mega cop. This is your modus operandi. This is how you've done it for years. Let's go. This is going to be really bad for my health, isn't it? It's not ideal, no. But you need the zeal. <laughs> Let's face it. You're never going to finish this case without cheating. Okay. My body is ready. Let's do this. We're going to disappoint Kim and impress no one but my own electrochemistry, okay? We've had some alcohol, time to have some speed, increase all of our stats except our morale taking uh, a massive hit in this section so we can go and beat, beat down this sleeping dude. You raise the bottle, close a nostril, and inhale furiously. Oh, it's just a... The rush <sighs> immediate. It tastes bitter and caustic and stings a bit inside your nose. Ooh, okay. Mamma mia! Now the taste is slowly receding into your throat. The rush is growing in intensity. Your little heart pounding like a bird in a cage. A sweat breaks out across your brow. Your jaw clenches. Hmm, you could work with this high. Like, literally, work. Solve the case. File some papers. Maybe clean up your hostel room. Then solve another case. Then start a side investigation into the paranatural. Then build a radio computer. And convince Kim there's a sexy mystery to this case. Whoa, this shit is strong. This shit is disco. Time for a little truth. Tell the lieutenant you did some. Clear the air. Feels great. Are there any downsides to this at all? To this? You kidding? <coughs> there are downsides to not being on it. There are massive downsides. It's a potent neurotoxin. You're turning yourself into a frayed idiot. All I'm going to say is uh, in the moment that I sniffed speed, Kim blinked. He didn't actually see me do any sort of physical response. And he actually just uh, is going to not even notice because Kim just is letting me be a mega cop. So cool, cool. Let's boogie. I can't bring myself to look him in the eyes. Spring, spring. Everything is clear around you. You're ready to concentrate on the next task in the task chain. Hell yeah. T bring on the task chain. All right. Uh, Kuno Diruta is the name on unfinished homework. Kuno with a K and an extra U. All right. See, Kim didn't even notice. It was fine. 
Uh, but we have now uh, found speed and sniffed it, finally. So there you go. Wonderful. My physique is looking good. And let's charge up my morale, because I've got enough charges for it. Time to deal with Kuno's dad. The air stinks with something sour. Regular black jeans for composure. What do we got now? Electrochemistry and reaction speed. Thank God for black jeans. Everyone looks good in black jeans. Combine it with your favorite book t-shirt and a yellow plastic bag to channel that laid back trash bin raccoon meets cool professor vibe or do whatever you want. It's just a pair of black, be uh, black jeans after all. Black beans, I almost said. A normal day for a normal guy. Nice. Look at, dude, my outfit is actually going very well all of a sudden. At least it's like fashionably sound and in terms of its color coordination, okay? The speed and the and the pry bar really bring this shit together. While I've taken this speed and this alcohol and I have a pry bar in my hands, maybe I should go and see if I can pry open that little ice cream container thing. But I believe I was being held off because um, we need a stronger one. But maybe we just need to be stronger. We'll see. Well, got some jeans for more composure. Then I got all of my stuff left. So I've got an hour left of my effects. A bundle of clothes heaped on the bed. A stained parka, some towels and a duvet, some socks even. In the dark, it looks like a nest. Hold up, Lieutenant. Look at that pile of clothes. Mm -hmm. The Lieutenant has covered up his nose. Slowly reach out your hand. Something underneath there is breathing. It doesn't give a shit that you're a cop. Stop your hand now, or you're gonna die. It's not too late. No one's going to blame you for backing out. You don't have to do this. Just get out. It's optional. We have to have a we have to have a give Harry some fighting experience after taking substances. <laughs> Otherwise, we've we've come too far. Only to turn away now. We're past the point of no return. I'm curious to see how Harry can handle some, some physical combat in this game. Let's keep extending our hand toward the pile. Your hand touches a greasy duvet, covered in cigarette burns and ketchup stains. You hear a growl. There is something alive underneath it. Pull the blanket off. You see a 60-year-old, fat, red-headed man passed out from large amounts of alcohol. And God knows what else. The smell of shit rises from his mouth. You don't have to take him down. He's already down. Okay, nice. Kim, is this thing even alive? I'm afraid it is. Look, it moves. He points to a fleshy lump sticking out from the other end of the blanket. The limb seems to be twitching from time to time. And look, the other foot is camouflaged by a striped sock bearing the name Max Tor on the sole. Three toes are poking out of a hole. Max Tor is a gas company. He's wearing free socks from a gas company. They probably came <coughs> with the bills. A groan rises from the man's throat, dry like a death rattle. He's trying to say something in his sleep. All right, 83% perception. It's a red check. Let's figure out what he's trying to say. The man groans once again, but his tongue keeps failing him. It's impossible to make out the syllables. A hand emerges from the blankets, trying to gesticulate something. And then it dawns upon you, clear and surreal. Pigs, he says. Uh -huh. He's trying to call you pigs. Are you going to let a semi-conscious degenerate disrespect you? Fuck you, die. What did you just say? His hand falls back on the bed, limp and defeated. A loud snore escapes his mouth. He's asleep again. At least he got to say his piece. Is this Kuno's father we're seeing? Well, judging by the color of his hair, I would say yes, it is. The lieutenant's right. The man's unwashed hair bears a familiar ginger tone. Even the hair on his chest is coppery. 
The light from the window falls into his half-open eyes. There's still plenty to be scared of here, just not what you thought. I was expecting something worse. I think he's still quite bad. I mean, what he has come to. This man won't be feeding his family anytime soon. Not that he was, but... At least he won't be beating his son. Mm. A pair of half-open bug eyes is staring back at you from the dark, empty, and frozen. It's clear that the person behind them is not awake. Hold on, what happened to his eyes? Can't you tell? It happens to exceptionally committed substance abusers. They fall asleep with their eyelids still open. Not a pretty sight. He's gonna sleep it off. I know this shit. Suddenly the man starts growling. Three words manage to escape his mouth, along with a strong stench of alcohol. Look, he's trying to communicate. <laughs> Maybe we should help him? And then we could whisper, I took your amphetamine, old man. I feel like that is gonna, that will like be like his like sleeper orders and it'll just like wake him up and it'll just go on a rampage. Maybe we should help him somehow? What is there to do? We could turn him on his side so he doesn't choke on his own vomit, but he's already on his side. Excellent form. We could take him to Remedy or Saint Baptiste, but he doesn't have money for medical services. The arm sauce would turn him down. They don't do charity for people who are trying to kill themselves. Besides, he'd be dead in a few. <laughs> the lieutenant stops listening to him. Years, months, weeks. The pile of blankets grunts miserably. I'm gonna say it. I took your amphetamine, old man. Silence. Only heat emanates <sighs> from the sleeping body. It did not activate him. All right, well, we, we took him out. We, we definitely took him out. Report back to Kuno. No need to take him out. He's already been taken out. All right. Close that door behind us. Let's get out of here. I'm going to go up in the balcony to speak to uh, Cindy real quick. About the whole communism thing, you know. With our... Uh, very well dressed um, character right now. <laughs> but Kim is not matching me. Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire my mural? Because <laughs> I'm wearing the jacket, I can say that. It doesn't work! I don't have Kim wearing his jacket. Oh, no, hang on. I just realized we're actually referring to the people that we were speaking to before that asked us to say hi. I don't believe it. I've never known those boys to have manners. The amusement in her voice doesn't fully mask genuine tenderness. They seem to hold you in high esteem. They'll never be skulls. But, but, their hearts are in the right place. And see, when you say skulls are cool, can I be a skull? Isn't what a skull would say, because they don't say that skulls are cool. But I am wearing my fuck the world jacket. Skulls are silly, what are you even trying to achieve? She throws you a conspiratorial glance, then presses her finger to her lips <coughs> and squints up at the sky as though straining to hear something in the distance. Have you noticed the quiet? Every so often, you might hear a gunshot pierce the air somewhere in Jamrock. But in Martinez, no gunshots, no sirens. The people are languishing in boredom and complacency. This place is a sepulchre. We'll paint it red. We bring the raucous. You bring the sirens. Hey, sister, let's talk politics for a minute. And what do you know about politics? My nose told me that you're also a communist. We should team up, join forces. Well, well. Sounds like quite the snout you've got there. 
your olfactory department wants you to know that it accepts <laughs> responsibility for wherever this line of interrogation leads you. Sure. I know someone who'd love to talk that ideological stuff. You're looking for Stepan. Who's Stepan? A right communist who runs a mega cool and very secret meeting. Does this Stepan happen to have a jacket like this? Show her the white jacket. He might. Will you help me find him? No. Oh. The lieutenant let slip a sigh that seems to suggest this turn was utterly predictable. Is there money you want? Here, take some. I've got plenty. Offer her five real. Keep your money. What I want from you is better than gold. Don't look so deflated. Whatever she asks, you keep your chin up. What's that? A wicked grin extends across her face. A laughing skull. Death hilarious. This is gonna be bad. Oink for me, piggy. <laughs> Oh, God damn it. Come on, this is no way to treat your revolutionary brother. Wrong! This is exactly how I treat my little brother. Oh, so now I can, now I can reluctantly, instead of with gusto, I'm gonna, I, okay. Oink, oink. There, that wasn't so bad, was it? It's not the worst indignity you've suffered the last several days, but it is up there. Mm. The lieutenant, needless to say, is not impressed. Sounds like you're really serious about meeting Stepan. It's touching, sort of. Stepan's group meets only at night, in an old room in these apartments here. It just so happens you're in luck. Their weekly meeting is tonight. There we go. Poke your snout around sometime after 10 p.m. and you might just find them. Hold on, what else can you tell me about this, Stabon? Just that he's a real communist. Not like the play acting you've been doing. The rest, you'll have to see for yourself. That's very helpful. Thank you, Cindy. Hold on. You didn't think it would be that easy, did you? Not really, but I was trying to be polite. See, Stabon's a bit on the paranoid side. He's got all these mega secret passphrases. To keep out infiltrators and the like. You can't join the meeting without one. <clears throat> Not to interfere in your personal errand, but I wonder whether it might have something to do with that phrase Manana mentioned over hearing. Oh, yes. All right, good thinking, Kim. The lieutenant nods. Guess this is what happens when two pigs put their heads together. That's enough. Off with you then. Catch you later, Cindy. Nice. Okay, so attend Stabon's meeting after ten at the Cape Side Apartments. Okay, so got something to do tonight. Kim, I'm gonna need you to dress up for the occasion. <laughs> Meanwhile, he's just gonna be like, you know what? I'm going to bed. All right. Um, let me unequip. Let me unequip the speed. Now, while we are enjoying the effects of substances, um, I want to quickly check while I have this pry bar in my hand if we have an increased percentage on uh, potentially getting that ice cream uh, thing open in here. I'm just going to quickly check that because it's on the way. Takuno to, to let him know about the speed that we didn't have to use because we didn't have to fight Kuno's dad at all. This orange machine is dead still. It has a hand cranked ice cream churner and an electric freezer. The ice around it slowly melting. I mean, we could try it because it's 3%, but the pry bar is not strong enough, which means we need to get another pry bar. But. The fact that it is a white check is good enough. We have gotten 8% completions before. A 3% chance, while possible, there is a chance, is uh, one that I will not be taking at this time. <laughs> However, 
Kuno, what's up? Ah. Fuck, does Kuno care? I took care of the drug situation. All right, so you got Kuno's kilo. Here is how we do it. First, you give Kuno Kuno's kilo, then Kuno gives you half back. Yeah. Funny how that's going to work, considering I've used some. He can't tell that I've used some. My eyes look just fine. That's how we split it. It's the best way. Street way. I'm keeping it. I'm doing it all myself. Yeah, I really don't think that it's a good idea to just give this give drugs to a child, no matter what kind of child it is. Aren't you going to ask how I got past your dad? Where down the street is? You sent your little friend in dressed as a hooker? Distraction style? That's some sick shit. <laughs> Not a single muscle moves on the lieutenant's face. Kuna wants to hear all about it, but first we split the kilo, then we shoot the shit. By kilo, you mean gram, right? Kuno knows what Kuno means. Kuno means gram. I'm not ready to make this decision. The fuck are you talking about? Getting Kuno all worked up for nothing? Okay. Let me think, let me think about that. I want to say no, but... I'm going to go through some other questions first before we get there. Some outstanding questions, like asking about the armor and stuff. I found your shack, Kuno. Yeah. Did you fuck in there? <laughs> uh, what was with the pig head? Oh, that. Kuno decapitates pigs. That's just a Kuno demo tape. Were you trying to send me a message of some short demo tape, like some kind of musician? Yeah. Kuno plays on snuff radio. Fucks pigs. Live. Fucks their heads off. Kuno's a cop killer. Okay. <laughs> okay. I found a plate covered with powder residue. Know anything about it? That's where Kuno gets his daily hit of electric. Kuno Shazam. Kuno rides the fucking lightning in there, pig. <laughs> What's the tube of Magnus, uh, Magnus Alarm, Kuno? It's a vitamin, pig. Don't you know anything? It's magnesium, right? Yeah, it's the mag. You fucking need that shit to stay on top of your game. Kuno goes through like a tube a day, rips mag like a motherfucker, and you could use a bottle. Oh, don't teach him, Kuno! He's gonna use it against you, Kuno! <sighs> I, feel, I feel bad for this kid, though. I know all about magnesium, I rock it all the time. You're not getting this, pig. It completely takes away the hangover. It's like you didn't do anything. Like you stayed home playing with your choo-choo. <laughs> Fuck you, pig! Don't do mag! You're gonna OD and you're gonna fucking die. I've heard enough of this. Good call, Pigmeister. Don't come and talk to Kuno about his kingdom. <laughs> Your kids often play in this yard. Right, Pig. This is where Kuno plays with his little wooden choo choo. What do you want with it? Did you ever climb that ladder? Look at that fucking shit. You're trying to get Kuno killed. So you would say that the ladder is unclimbable? Fuck does Kuno know? Kuno's not a fucking acrobat. Kuno knows the ladder is unclimbable. The lieutenant takes a quick note in his notebook. It's a trap, Kuno! Don't climb it, Kuno! What's in the greenhouse over there? Don't know. Kipped ass gardener used to work there. Kipped is a pejorative term used to describe people of South Seminese or Eri Oppergeit descent. It used to be a common first name among the Eri Oppergeit <coughs> Ilmara. Not so much anymore. Hold on, the gardener used to work there? Yeah, that's what Kuno said. She couldn't handle the heat, so she took off. Kuno can take it. Shit, nothing to Kuno. <laughs> he fills his lungs with the rancid air. His eyes get a little watery. <laughs> the gardener? She's not actually a gardener. Turns out she's a union fixer. The fuck does this have to do with the Kuno? Kuno doesn't give a shit who she is. You were expecting relaying this information to him to be more rewarding, right? Telling him you found out she isn't a gardener. You know what you should do if you want to get rewarded? Drugs. Drugs are more rewarding than work. Or alcohol. If you don't want to do drugs. Alcohol is just as rewarding, but it isn't a drug. This has been going on for quite a while, hasn't it? 
You've been thinking about drugs and alcohol for a long time now. Juicy drugs. Tasty alcohol. God damn it, electrochemistry. Seems kind of boring now, going back to... What was this about? Some yard? Yards aren't interesting. Only drugs are interesting. Drugs and alcohol. You feel sad now, but what can you do? Life has to go on. With a heavy sigh, you say... I'm out of questions later. For now, let's talk about something else. Yeah, whatever. Kuno doesn't give a shit. I want to discuss the body with you, Kuno. The fuck about it? Where's the rest of his armor, besides his cuirass? I got that. Kuno doesn't give a shit about the armor. How come? That fucking had one thing majorly wrong with him. He's a fucking mutant. A mutant? Do you remember how he looked? Fucking growth hormone shit? He's a giant? The armor's too big for any man. Kuno doesn't give a shit about that freak armor. Kuno threw that shit away. Oh, come on. He's just pretending that he doesn't care because he's too small for the armor. What do you mean you threw it away? Kuno tried to get the helmet on. It was too big. He performs a kickoff on the imaginary helmet. Okay, so there is also a helmet. Kuno kicked that shit in the sea. Rugby <sighs> style. That shit means nothing to Kuno. You threw it in the sea? Yeah. That shit means nothing to Kuno. Kuno doesn't give a shit about material shit. Kuno's a fucking monk. If you don't give a shit about material shit, then you don't need this speed, my friend. You wanna fuck on someone about that armor? Go fuck the mustached union fuck. The jolly troubadour shit at the gate. Who do you mean, troubadour? Yeah, cock in boot. You know that jolly union cow fucker? Came around talking about cows or some shit? Came around pretending like he cares about cows? He means manana. The laid-back striker at the gates. You mean manana? Yeah. He's the one you want to talk to. He's fucking crazy about that armor shit. Coming here pretending like he likes cows. Trying to catch a peep at Kuno's armor. Curious, my liege. Why did Kuno feed you this information? Let it be. Yes. Pray pardon, sire. Better to let it be. I did not mean to make you paranoid. Because Kuno is saying, Kuno says what he fucking says. Fuck are you talking about? What is this contusion shit? He says you're stupid, Kuno. They want to make you stupid again. It's a bruise, mate. Oh, did Kuno make your shit sniffing harder? Obstruction of shit sniffing? This is Kuno's kingdom. Kuno fucking rules here. Hmm. You hear the lieutenant hum. You're testing Kuno's patience here. Get lost, f Jesus. Kuno doesn't fucking care. <laughs> hear that? Magnesium. That's what you're lacking. The lack of magnesium has you slouched. The magnesium levels in your blood are dangerously low. It's about the low magnesium levels and not the high alcohol levels. My magnesium level is fine, but let's have a look. I fucking knew it wasn't the alcohol. Or the other things. Yeah, the other things. Long live the other things. Made you strong as an ox, they have. So there's a lack of magnesium in me? Yes, and it's critical. Look at yourself. You're practically devolving into a fish due to the lack of magnesium in your bloodstream. I need to mag it up? You need to get so magged up. You've probably had two heart attacks and a minor stroke already. And the only prescription is insane amounts of magnesium. One stroke? Don't be so modest. He's having one right now. <laughs> You're saying I need to become a magnesium-based life form? Yes. If you want to live, you need to evolve. You need to transcend the carbon barrier. Go to the apothecary and buy insane amounts of magnesium. It will reverse the damage to your circulatory system. Just remember, it's not the alcohol. Buy more of that too. Alcohol is not the problem. And it's certainly not the dextroamphetamine, nor smoking for 40 years. It's the lack of magnesium and excess of coffee. You should stop drinking coffee. It wreaks havoc on your gastrointestinal system. 
Great thought. Very relevant considering the substances in my system right now. Minus one shivers, no shakes. It is generally understood that human beings are carbon-based or organisms fusing little carbon tubes together to form a complex, mushy structures capable of thought, love, and locomotion. It is also known that these structures sometimes like to take the edge off by consuming ethanol, amph uh, amphetamine, etc. In such cases, it is important to supplement your body with magnesium. Tired? Maggot. Down? Mag time. Liver damage? Maximum mag. Some people say magnesium doesn't really do anything and you just need to quit. What do we tell them? <laughs> Great. So there was still some earlier stuff to resolve with Kuno that did lead to a thought. I am going to leave the speed conversation for now. Um, and uh, we've got Manana to actually ask about more armor. Uh, we also have um, the Hardy Boys to confront about them wanting to spice up the story. Uh, and a few other things as well. But I think with that one, we're going to bring this episode of Disco Elysium to a close. Uh, so thank you so much for joining me today and uh, watching along. Uh, it's been a bit a good start to the day, and uh, we're getting some getting some big important stuff out, like the uh, like the interview that took place, which is again just giving another different perspective um, on the situation, and the plot thickens once more. So we'll explore more next time and see what answers we can find. I'll see you then.